Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this month's episode of TBI Cluedo! Yes. <laughs> Security! Can you please escort this lady over here out? So, if you're new here, this is my TBR game which I play every month which decides what I read. How exciting, I know, we're all just so excited. <laughs> so, July, the situation. Can you see books here? What can you see? Yeah, you can. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. July, I'm going on holiday in like a couple of days at the start of July. So I am gonna hopefully be reading three books whilst on holiday, I have got a video planned. But um, yeah, there's a few books and few videos I'm also making in July where I'm catching up on videos that were supposed to be in previous months and I just had to delay and delay. So I don't want to pick those books again, they've already been in TBR Cluedo. But I think I've done pretty well. But there's a few books which I don't know, or at least one, not the notebook, <laughs> that I don't know what I'm going to be reading yet. So we'll figure that out in a sec. So that's all the news for July. No real news, so let's just get into what the first role is. Okay, roll number one, person number four, which is pink up here in horror. Let's see how many we roll. A six and a five. Okay, I think I'm gonna go through a door because I don't really have any horror to read. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many have I used up? Seven. How many did I have? Uh, 11, right? Yeah. Seven, then where can I go? Eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> eight, nine, ten. Shoot, I can't do it. Maybe eight, nine. No. <laughs> eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, we can't go to Thriller. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ele oh my god, eight, nine, ten, no, nope. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, ten, eleven. Okay, which is number five, which is something with blue on the cover. So first roll was a fantasy with blue on the cover and I am gonna be reading The Perishing by Natasha Dion, very blue, a lot of blue. <laughs> Probably one of the most blue covers I own. This book has very, 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 very mixed reviews. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. It currently has a 2.86 rating on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, I once did a video where I reacted to the lowest rated books that I've read and like one of them was Catherine House which was a five star for me that I absolutely loved. So I can really love books that the general population just doesn't get. They just, they're not the girls. They're not the girls, whereas I am the girl. <laughs> so I actually have not necessarily high hopes for this. <laughs> That's maybe a bit far, but I am really, really excited to read it and see what I think of it. So this is set in the 1930s in Los Angeles with this black woman who wakes up with no memory of how she got there or where she's from. She meets this guy who like, she has no memory of ever meeting, but she's been drawing his face for years. And it's very strange. It, apparently it turns out she might be immortal. I don't know. I get the sense it's gonna be a very confusing book, a book that you can't really <laughs> like give much of a synopsis for that is very confusing. Confusing, but I'm really excited to read it all the same. I actually have pretty high hopes for this one. Roll number two, person number one, which is green. I'd really love to get the rose prompt if I can. So, got a three and a five. Great, we can just go one, two, three and get the rose prompt. Okay, roll two was the rose prompt, which is always so exciting, as this is the one where my patrons pick what I read. So if you don't know, I have a patron, and whenever anyone joins, whatever tier you are, you get to pick two books off of my own TBR or the audiobooks I have access to, to pick for me to read. And they go into this pot. It's very full now. And when the rose prompt comes up, I reach in and I pick one of the books out of here. Just so that you know, the other TBR could I really is a benefit that you get. With my patrons, if you join the top tier, you get two of the TBR Cluedo books sent to you. One with your number, which you are that you joined that tier, and one with a cat. 
gold paw print on the back and it's very cute so anyways let's reach into here and see what we get and then i'll let you know which patrons picked it i'm trying to like reach through and get a good one without spilling too many on the floor okay let's give this a go let's see what this is no it the whole thing just fell on the floor okay Oh shit, and I just dropped the one that I picked and I don't know which one it is! Oh no, it's a mess. Life could be worse. No, not really. This is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever just want to cry? Because that's me right now. I don't deserve this. I really don't. Okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna... <laughs> okay. Right, we're gonna have to pick another one because I lost whatever one I'd pick. What is that? What does that say? Cracked up to be? Okay. <laughs> Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. Oh my God. What? What do I do with this information? Oh my God, who picked this? I feel like we have certain books that like 20 people have picked, like Finley Donovan. Who picked Cracked, Cracked Up To Be? Anna. Anna picked Cracked Up To Be. Anyone else? Just Anna, I think. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> So this is Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. I'm so happy, I'm genuinely so happy. This is one of Courtney Summers' backlist books. Oh my God, it's so short. Yes, it's only like 220 pages. Thank you so much, Anna. So I don't know much about this. It's one of, is it her first book? Yes, it is, it's her debut. And it's about this girl who's like the perfect girl and something terrible happens to her. I don't really need to know much else. I'm excited to see what I think of a debut Courtney Summers, perhaps, I'm not sure if I'm gonna expect five stars from this because it is her debut. I mean, like, I mean, it might be five stars, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna quite expect that, but I'm really excited to read this. Oh my God, what a treat. What a treat. <laughs> Roll number three. Person number eight, which is blue over here in contemporary. Let's see how many we roll. A one and a six, okay. Let's go. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, can't do that. <laughs> oh, I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is number eight, which is a 2021 release. Roll three was a romance that is a 2021 release and I picked Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Seguria. Misa Seguria, I've read one book from, this time will be different. And it was just kind of like fun, contemporary romance, YA, that's just like a palate cleanser. So I'm hoping this will be the same. I don't know too much about this. I have an arc of it, which I didn't get to. So I'm very glad that we're finally gonna be reading this. No, no, but it's not <laughs> funny. At the end of the day, is it? It's serious. Basically what I know is what it says on the back. Nozomi has it all planned out. A summer in San Francisco, the perfect internship, fake dating the girl of her dreams. So I think Misa Seguria's writing and YA books always have this just like easy, comforting YA romance, kind of like the summer of teenage love vibes. And I'm very excited to get to this. I feel like it's the kind of thing I really need right now. I'm just so glad I'm finally getting to it because it's an arc that I have from love. Last year, I'm so happy to be finally reading it and just kind of having a bit of a palate cleanse, I feel like is what this book gives me. Roll number four, person number seven, which is brown over here in historical. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a four. Okay, let's just go one, two, three, four, which is number one, which is a new to me author. Next was a historical that is a new to me author and I have picked The Fatal Crossing, A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. This is a debut. I actually did on Goodreads. This only has like 300 ratings. Like not a lot of people have read this and it sounds so good. So I'm excited to read it myself, see what I think and then I can make all of you read it if it is good. But it's a very Agatha Christie inspired uh, mystery. November 1924, the Endeavour set sail with 2000 passengers and a killer on board, dot, dot, dot. How many people were scared? 
Me too. I was really, really scared. And I've always said when I've spoken about this, I've spoken about how excited I am to read this quite a few times. I'm so glad that I'm finally getting to it. Is that the author's a big fan of Agatha Christie. I've seen him reading a lot of non-fiction about her and that fills me with like, I feel safe. I feel like it's not just someone being like, oh, I'm gonna write like Agatha Christie, but not really understanding what that means and the level of detail and knowledge that she has in her books. Oh, look, I mean, I just looked at the front. Oh, we have a fucking character list. I love it. A list of notable passengers and crew traveling on board the Endeavour compiled by the ship's office, officer, Timothy Birch. I can't even speak, I'm getting overwhelmed. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Set the scene. Set the scene from the first go. I'm just, I'm gonna fall in love. I'm gonna fall in love. <laughs> Roll number five. Person number four, which is pink again. So we're in here. Let's see how many we roll. Got a four and a one. Uh, <laughs> let's go one, two, three, four, which is number 15, ooh, which is a book that a booktuber hated. That's a fun one, so I have to find a book that a booktuber hated. Next was a fantasy that a booktuber has hated. I found this so hard. I've never gotten this prompt before and it was like impossible. I had so many books that I know that have been unpopular, that like book Twitter or like the general readership it hasn't been popular with, but finding one that a booktuber has hated was so hard. It was so hard. It was like impossible. I was like really struggling. I looked at all the books that I first thought of would come into this and I was like, fuck, like none of them work. And then I thought, who can I count on to read fantasy and give a low rating? And I said, it's Aaron. It's Aaron. <laughs> Aaron is so strict with her ratings. Like legit, five stars once in a blue moon. Like once in a blue moon, like genuinely. So I was like, okay, it's gonna be good luck. So I went on Aaron's Goodreads. I went on her red shelf. I sorted it by rating and I was like scrolling through her one star ratings until I found a book on my TBR. And I found The Deep by River Solomon, which I've been so excited to read. I've had the audiobook for this on Audible for like 10 years. It's very short. Well, guess what people? I get excited about small things. I don't know why Aaron didn't like it. <laughs> but I just know she rated it one star. So that's enough for me. So we're going to be reading The Deep. This is about mermaid creatures who are descendant from uh, women slaves who were thrown overboard on the ships on the slave trade. And one of them carries all of the trauma of these women of these generations. I'm very, very excited to read this. I've heard that the audiobook is wonderful as well. A little known fact is that in my intro, when that, when that screen props up and I have words in the background, I just did that. I was around my boyfriends at the day that I was making that. And I just did it with the books I randomly had with me that day. So half of it is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and half of it is this. There were the two books I had with me that day. I've read obviously Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, that's why I ended up reading that day, but I still haven't read this, but it's always on my channel. It's there like every day. So I'm excited to see what I think of this, what I think of the audiobook as well. I'm thinking these two books I don't have planned in any videos, so we might have to do like a 24 hour readathon. I feel like this is very, very feasible for me in a 24 hour readathon and maybe a graphic novel as well. Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. That would be good because I'm still very behind on my Goodreads goal. So I feel like that would be a good thing to do maybe later in the month if I have time. So yeah, excited to read this and this, maybe together. <laughs> Final roll, let's see what we get. Oh, person number two, which is purple up here in mystery. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a four. Let's just go one, two. So that is a mystery, number nine. That's a book under 6,000 ratings. And then finally, the final role was a mystery with under 6,000 ratings on Goodreads. So it's like a less popular book, a less read book. And this is the round that my patrons vote on. So if you don't know, my patrons vote on one round with TBR Cluedo every single month. And the book that they vote on, the round they vote on, ends up being our book club pick for the month. So the options I gave them for this were Girl on the Walls by AJ Ganuse, The Key in the Lock by Beth Underdown, The Inugami Curse by Sashi Yokomizo, and The 
Forest of Stolen Girls by June Ha, and it was incredibly close between two of them, but in the end, the winner was The Forest of Stolen Girls by June Ha. So I actually know barely anything about this. One of my patrons, Melissa, very, very kindly got this for me, which was just so incredibly kind, and I know it's one of her favorite books. It says, oh, 1426. I didn't know this was historical. Our protagonist family has never been the same since she and her younger sister went missing and were later found unconscious in the forest near a gruesome crime scene. Years later, Detective Min, I'm gonna pr butch the pronunciation because it's the first time you're reading it, Wani's father, learns that 13 girls have recently disappeared from the same forest that nearly stole his daughters. He travels to their hometown on the island of Jeju to investigate, only to vanish as well. Determined to find her father and solve the case that tore their family apart, Wani returns home to pick up the trail. As she digs into the secrets of the small village and collides with her now estranged sister, she comes to realize that the answer could lie within her own buried memories of what happened in the forest all those years ago. <gasps> I'm really excited. This is gonna be such a fun read for the book club. I, I love that. I absolutely love, 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 love the cover. Hello? I love the cover. I just think it's so gorgeous with this kind of like illustration style. So yeah, we're gonna be reading this in July for the book club. It's like not too long either. It's about 370 pages. So I think that's a pretty good book club length for us to have a lot to discuss. And I'm just so excited to read this to everyone. Oh, I've never read in June her, so I'm very, very excited. So there we have it. That is my July TBR, Cluedo TBR. And I'm really excited to read all of these. I feel like this is gonna be a really, really good month of TBR Cluedo. So please let me know what you're gonna be reading in July. I would absolutely love to know. If you got into the end of the video, comment a flower emoji for the Forest of Stolen Girls, because it's all just like flower illustrations. Wow, I cannot get over how much I love this cover. Um, comment that down below if you got to the end. Let me know what's on your TBR for the month. And I'll see you very soon in another wow. video. Bye.